Hey everybody, it's Rob with Terry City Guns and Ammo, and today we're taking a look at a really neat old revolver. We're looking at a Ruger Security 6, chambered in 357 mag and 38 special. Stick around. As stated before, this is a Ruger Security 6. This is chambered in 357 Magnum and 38 Special. Uh, this is looks a little different than normal because it has this vent rib. There was a company that uh, manufactured these aluminum vent ribs as an aftermarket accessory way back in the day. Uh, but these were very commonly used as uh, police officer duty guns back in the day. And it's very, very similar to the newer uh, Ruger GP100s that they started making in the early 80s. And from what I understand, the reason they started making the GP100, they went away from the Security 6, uh, is because, you know, like I said, these were used quite often for uh, police duty guns. And that was right about the time that a lot of uh, police agencies were going away from revolvers for carry or duty guns and switched them to uh, autos and so there was kind of a decline in the amount of revolvers people were buying because they were going well the cops don't care of these anymore why do i want a gun that looks like a, a cop's duty gun so they they came out with the gp100 with a whole different look to try to reignite the uh the sales of the 357 mags without really having to change much i mean most of the changes or the differences between the security 6 and the gp100 most of them are really aesthetic but uh let's do some shooting of this nice old gun. I just loaded up some cast uh, 158 grain uh, powder coated bullets. Let's see, uh, let's shoot our Scoops TV gong there. I think I'm holding a little high. There we go, so we need about a six o'clock hold. Let's see about hitting our hostage popper. Boy, those old 357 mags really whip it around. Very nice, let's go down our plate rack here. And we are empty. Yeah, you know this is a this is a really great gun. I have I have a GP100 as well, and uh, it's kind of the perfect setup having both of them for me because uh, I I keep the old Security Six just with the uh, open sights as it was manufactured, and my GP100 has a scope. They both have six inch barrel. They're both chambered in 357 Magnum. So I feel like between the two, I kind of get the best of both worlds. You know, I've got my my good old. Uh, iron sight gun and then I've, I've got my scoped revolver um, which the whole purpose of me getting a GP100 and putting a scope on it was because I intended to uh, try it out for hunting deer and I haven't got around to doing that yet but I will someday uh, first I think I got to come up with like a, a chest rig or something for holding that GP100 but uh, as you can see it's fairly accurate up close let's go out there to our 60 yard silhouette. Let me get on the other side of the camera here. Let's see, is that you can just see it right there? Let's see about hitting that 60 yarder. Oh, yeah. No problem. You know, if you look really close, I can't zoom anymore, but right out here, I've got a 100 yard silhouette. Let's see if we can nail that with our, our last three shots of the cylinder. No idea where I hit. Well, if I had a spotter available right now, I might be able to see where I'm hitting and uh, adjust my, my hold, but I'm, I just don't know where I'm hitting at that 100 yards. Um, we might try that again when I have a spotter to let me know where I'm hitting so I can make them an, an adjustment, but I just couldn't see where I'm hitting. Uh, I'm going to go load up some 38 Special now, and we'll see how this old, old gun does with 38 Special. All right, so now we're loaded up with some uh, 158 grain cast lead bullets again, but this time they're loaded in 38 Special. Uh, you know, this gun really handles a 357 Magnum as well. Um, you know, it's got a fair amount of heft, it's got a really comfortable grip, and it's got a, a heavy enough barrel that the uh, 357 Magnums really aren't bad. Um, so it makes the 38 Specials really easy shooting. 
go back to the Scoops TV plate. Like that, you could let a kid shoot that. That is, it, it's so light. If they're strong enough to hold up the gun, they're gonna be able to handle that recoil. Oh, just a little high. There we go. Shoot our hostage popper. So those were 158 grain 38 specials. Now we're gonna switch over to my favorite ones. And if those 158 grains weren't light, light recoiling, these are my favorite target rounds right here. This is 38 special, loaded with 148 grain double-ended wad cutter. And it's seated all the way down into the brass just about. I mean, you can see there's just a tiny bit of it sticking out. So it leaves very, very little room for powder. So it, you're, you're loading very, very light charges of powder. And back in the day when uh, 38 Special was used in, in competition quite a bit, that was kind of the favorite thing out there uh, for those competition 38 Specials was that 148 grain double-ended wad cutter. Um, they cut perfect holes in targets so it makes it easy for scoring. Um, and then they're just, they're so light recoiling yet still so very, very accurate. Let's hit the Scoops TV plate. Let's hit our spinner. Keep forgetting I need to hold six o'clock with this. And those things, yeah, they're an easy shooting round. Super light. I kind of wonder how they would be at 60 yards. Let me load up this cylinder. And we'll go back out to our 60 yard target. You know these uh these double-ended wad cutters they look so weird when you're when you're loading them because there's no front or back they look the exact same they just look like a, a a cylinder of of lead and it's got a couple of grooves on it just for for lubrication um, and then it has just kind of a weird little bump on the very end um, it kind of sticks out like a nose ish but not quite but it looks the exact same on both sides um, so yeah, that's really, if you've never messed with them, they're really kind of odd. All right, let's, uh, see about our 60 yard target here. I don't know where that hit. I think maybe I'm holding too high. Okay. 60 yards, I still need to hold pretty much six o'clock. I thought I was going to have to hold a little higher. Yeah, those still shoot really good at the 60 yard. I'm kind of, I really want to hit that 100 yard, especially with one of those little wad cutter rounds. They're really not made for uh, distance. They're made for accuracy. They're, they're made to be shot at not very high speeds, you know, they're, which is why you seat them all the way down into the case. So you have very little powder capacity. But uh, I really want to hit that 100 yard. So let's give it a try again as I'm bumping my camera. Oh, we really bear down here. I'm gonna hold at the head. Hey okay so that's how I held at the feet. So I was I was kind of messing around. I, I aimed right for the silhouette, didn't hit it. Aim for the head, didn't hit it. I went down to the feet, at where the feet would be if that was a person. There we go. That I pulled. That one, I don't know. All right. So I've got an idea of where to, where to hold with the 38 Special. I'm gonna go get some 357 Magnums because I wanna hit that with the 357 Magnum. We'll be right back. All right, we went back to our uh, 158 grain powder coated cast 357 Magnum loads. So if I was holding the feet, even with the uh, 38 Special, I'm really gonna have to hold the feet with the 357 Magnum. But let's see if we can do it. I think that was too low. I'm not sure. There we go. I think I was holding too low on those first couple. Nope. 
I got it wet one time. Let's load up and try again. I got some more in my pocket. Yeah, you know, uh, if you've never tried it, shooting a handgun 100 yards is a heck of a challenge. With any gun. With any handgun, that is. For one, that little silhouette out there looks smaller than my front sight. It's narrower than my front sight. Let's see here. There we go. There we go. No, nope, I pulled that one. Dang it. I thought I figured out the spot. Hit it a couple of times. All right, I won't bore you with any more of that. Let's go back up close. Let's watch how hard these 357s uh, knock our short range targets. Yeah, this really is a great old gun. You can still find them around. You know, they haven't been manufactured in 40 years, but uh, you know, they've got quite a following, so you can still find them out there. Let's, uh, something I don't do nearly enough of is double action shooting. Let's go double action for this last cylinder. Let's go to Scoop's TV plate. Let's go to our spinner. Oh, can't hit it. Let's go to the hostage popper. Yeah, obviously I don't do enough double action shooting. I will tell you, um, this doesn't have the best double action trigger, but I'll take responsibility for my part of it. Single action is fantastic. It's got a really crisp light trigger, but with the double action, there's kind of a weird little hang up about halfway through. It feels odd, but the, the single action is great. You know these uh these old Rugers, they're really they're they're built like a tank. They are super super well built, super durable. I have carried this in, in the hunting woods many different times. Um, you know it's a great old reliable revolver uh, that just won't do you wrong. And uh, you know I'm a big fan of them. I think uh, there's there's even some in some reloading books. There's even sections in there with load data that says for Ruger revolvers only because they are built really stouter than, uh, even though I'm a big fan of the Smith & Wesson revolvers, they're actually built stouter than the Smith & Wesson. So there's there's sections of the load data which are only, only made for Ruger revolvers just because they're the only thing that are strong enough to hold up to those pressures. So yeah, they're really built quite well. And I don't think you could go wrong with one. Um, you know, you could you could get really heavy defensive loads for this and carry it in the woods in case you were in a bare area um, and it wouldn't, wouldn't serve you bad. Uh, I think it would do quite well. Anyway, I haven't shot this on a video yet. I've had this for a long, long time and uh, I just thought it would be a fun old revolver to bring out and show to you guys and hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I appreciate you guys watching the videos. I really appreciate all the support I get from you guys. I don't have a lot of subscribers, but I have some really amazing supporters. You know who you are, and I can't thank you guys enough. If you haven't had a chance to sub subscribe to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button so you see whenever new videos come out. Make sure you have the notifications turned on. And with that, well, thank you very much, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.